So today I want to talk about three really key math IA ideas. And if you implement these correctly, they can lead you to a grade seven. And these are ideas I haven't really seen out on YouTube. And I thought I'd share with them today so you can really get a step ahead when it comes to planning your IA and making sure you get a really, really effective math IA hitting that grade seven. Okay, let's go over and get started. Okay, so these are my top three ideas to make a really fantastic math IA and get that grade seven. Now the first thing is to use the paper three. So from high level AA or high level AI. You're thinking, what's that got to do with an IA? Well, let me go through an example paper three. So this comes from November. And here we explore the models for the height of water in a cylindrical container. And in this particular paper three question, we get some data, or Eva gets some data here, and then we try and go through a linear model. Then we look at trying to use a quadratic model to see if we can predict uh, how the water is gonna come out the cylinder. And then we do some calculus and differentiation to actually investigate the rate of change in more depth. And this is actually is something you could do at home. You could get a cylindrical container, you could actually fill it up with water, and then as you release the valve, you can actually measure how long it takes for the height of the water to get smaller and smaller and smaller until it gets to zero. This is an experiment you could do at home very, very easily, record the data, and essentially follow the model for this paper three question. Try a linear model, then critically reflect. Does it work well? Does it not work well? Why? Quadratic model, why does that work? You could even look at a cubic model or a power model or something else to also investigate that further. And then you can bring in your calculus, which you've done on the high level course, and to an extent on the standard level course as well, to then get another good area of mathematics there. So you can use the paper three as a model working your way through to actually get a very, very good IA. Number two is use Gapminder, particularly for the standard level students. Now, what is Gapminder? Let me go over to that now. So this is gapminder.org. And what you can do here, if I just scroll down, is the animating data. So one of the best ways to go about a standard level IA is to find two variables and then look for some kind of correlation, some kind of relationship, whether that's linear, quadratic, cubic, or something else. Now we start here between the income of uh, various countries in the world and life expectancy. But notice on here, you can just press these, this button here and then look and compare lots and lots of different variables. So you could do babies per women versus life expectancy or something to do with the economy or something to do with the environment, something to do with health as well. And this allows you to actually explore lots of different data. You can look at specific countries here. You can maybe look at just look at a particular region. So say we want to look at G77 countries, then you could do that and then it changes what's on the board there as well. So this is a really, really useful tool to go about comparing any two variables and then looking at various different modeling parts as well. Okay, and number three is actually using good real example IAs that the IBF actually provided. So let's go over to their online website and show you exactly where they are and you can get some really important information out of it. So this is support material that is provided a completely free of charge from the International Baccalaureate for teachers, but also students as well. And this actually gives you 21 different example IAs that have been written. And if we take example seven here, which is modeling rainfall, then we have the student work, which I'm just going to click on here and open up the PDF for you. So this is uh, the student and what they actually wrote here. And again, you could go, ah, modeling rainfall, maybe I can model snow, for example, in a particular country, or model uh, storms, for example, and how much rainfall comes down there. So we've got the entire IA here, which is very, very useful. And if I go back, we've also got the annotated student work. So this is how the teacher actually marked it, using A, B, C, D, and E as the different criteria. And then probably the most useful thing for you is if we go back and go to comments, you'll see the actual mark that they got. So for sand level, you'd get 16 out of 20 for this, and for high level, 15 out of 20. And you can see the comments that the teacher's actually given for this particular uh, IA. So you can take one of these IAs here. So if I go to the overview here, you can see you've got lots of different examples of IAs, and maybe you want to take one of these and then adapt it. So for example, we've got the SIR model in relation to world epidemics, for example. You may want to apply that to Corona, for example, or apply that to uh, SARS you know, about 10 years ago. 
So by using these example IAs, one, first of all, you can see what a good IA looks like. And number two, maybe you want to adapt some of the ideas here to make it personal to you wherever you are in the world.